What's up everyone? Good morning. Happy Championship Sunday. We got two great games on the schedule today. It is NFL, AFC, and NFC Championship Sunday. And this morning, I'm going to break down the games. I'm going to predict the winner of both games. Um, we, we're going to have exciting football today. Um, and we all know that games of this magnitude... It's all about matchups, right? When it really comes down to it. And you got a very good Chiefs team uh, playing a very good Bengals team. A Bengals team that got off to a slow start this year, but finally uh, picked themselves up and, and found themselves where they are today. Um, and then you look on the other side and you see what the 49ers have been able to do um, under Kyle Shanahan's brilliance to get to where they are. And then, of course, you have the Philadelphia Eagles, who had an, an amazing year, uh, led by Jalen Hurts and a high-flying offense and also a defense that um, is very stout and that's fearsome. So we're going to we're gonna break down the NFC uh, matchup first um, because I believe that's the first game uh, that's going to kick things off today. Um, so... We'll get right into it. Let, let's talk a little bit about the Eagles and the 49ers. Now, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Eagles fans. I'm, I'm sorry, Eagles fans. I know I got a lot of Eagle, Eagles fans who follow me faithfully. I thank you guys. I appreciate it. I love you guys. Um, you guys are awesome. You guys are my folks. You guys are my people. But I hate to hurt y'all feelings. Hate to hurt y'all feelings, I really do, because I'm going with the 49ers to beat the Eagles. And I know the Eagles are one of the most complete teams in the NFL, if not the most complete teams in the NFL. But how often do we see the most complete team get to the Super Bowl? We see it happen, but we can't sleep on this 49ers team either. And this 49ers team is scary good. This 49ers team has a lot of weapons. Um, and you've seen the emergence of Brock Purdy. Bar Brock Purdy has been simply remarkable since he has taken over that offense. You know, and I like that kid a lot. I, I think if he takes care of the football and if he's productive, I think the 49ers can come away with a victory over the Eagles. Now, I know that's not a popular choice by many. I know there's a lot of you who are going with the Eagles. Fair enough, because the Eagles are good in their own right, too. They're a very, very good team. And and nobody is uh, nobody is saying they're not a good team. I'm just, I'm just picking the 49ers to win. But let's look at what the Eagles have played like all year. They, they, look, Jalen Hurts has been the breakout player of the year. Um, and he looks to continue his impressive campaign by leading the Eagles to a Super Bowl. Um, Hertz has been very important to Philly's success. Uh, that was never more clear than in recent weeks. Um, when he had a shoulder injury that sidelined sidelined it, him and his team went 0-2 in his absence. Um, he returned. The shoulder was fine. And, and he delivered. He delivered an impressive performance against the Giants. Um, this Eagles offense is loaded with talent. You have wide receivers, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. Each have recorded 1,000 plus yard, a plus yard campaign, excuse me. And then you have running back Miles Sanders, who topped the 1,000 yard mark as a rusher. Philly's defense has played a large role in their success. You got Brandon Graham, you got Josh Sweat, but then you also look at what that secondary can do too. You got you got some great ball hawking uh defensive backs in that secondary. They can change the momentum of the game by playing a game of takeaway. And we've seen that with those guys. Uh so you know there's no margin for error for the 49ers because if you turn over the ball, the Eagles will capitalize on your mistakes. They will capitalize on your mistakes. So a lot is going to be asked of Brock Purdy today, and he's going to have to take care of the football. He's going to have to be able to move the football 
consistently down the field. And if he can do that, I give the 49ers a great chance. The 49ers, to me, have been a well-rounded, battle-tested football team all season. They're no stranger to adversity. Uh, you know, they have overcome the loss of two starting quarterbacks and in-season injuries to key veteran contributions, but they've never flinched. Uh, they never uh, gave up on themselves. They continue to, to, uh, to find a way to get it done, and they closed out the regular season with 10 straight wins. Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, turns out to be Mr. Relevant for the team. This is a guy who plays like a seasoned veteran. He's played like a seasoned veteran. He's been able to distribute the ball to a star-studded cast. Um, you have Christian McCaffrey. You have Debo Samuel. You have George Kittle. You have all these weapons at your disposal. The 49ers, to me, are just too deep. Um, you know, Brock Purdy has been that unlikely hero. I like D'Amico Ryan's defense. It's one of the best defenses in the league. Um, and it has provided the, the, the pressure needed on offenses and, you know, opposing quarterbacks. Um, so, I mean, also, the defense also eases a lot of the pressure on the offense and the 49ers young quarterback as well. But what makes the 49ers so dangerous is that Kyle Shanahan is, is because of Kyle Shanahan's game planning and, and his schemes. That's what makes the 49ers so lethal and dangerous. So I'm going to go with the 49ers. I think they win by a field goal. I think Robbie Gold, Gold comes in. He's clutch. He makes the game-winning field goal. The Eagles will lose to the 49ers. Now... The Eagles also have the same well-rounded approach that has carried them all, all season. So I don't think this is going to be a high-scoring affair. I think it's going to be a very low-scoring game. Uh, Hertz has executed uh, the, on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, he's one of the most efficient passers in the game. Uh He's connecting with his dynamic receivers out there and reliable tight end, uh, Dallas Goldert. If I said his name correctly, you know, I'm, I'm guys, I'm not good at pronouncing names, but I try. I try. I could write it out, though. I could spell it. I could write it. So uh, I could do that. Um, but there's a balance. You know, this team has a balance. Uh, you have Sanders, Hurts leading the way. Um, they have an aggressive defensive front. And a complimentary, uh, a complimentary stingy secondary as well. And I just talked about that moments ago. Um, but they're going to have to keep the pressure on the 49ers uh, defense by attacking with balance and versatility if they want a chance to win and get after Purdy and force him into making mistakes, like I just said moments ago. But um, – Ultimately, I think the 49ers are the better team. I know that that's not the case on paper, but that's my prediction. I think the 49ers come out of the NFC this year. Um, the 49ers are just that, that, that good, you know. And again, Kyle Shanahan, he could, he can adjust, you know, he can adjust to an opposing team's style of play. Uh, you know, he always figures out the opposing team. So the 49ers get the edge um, against the Eagles and should clinch their berth to the Super Bowl. They will be punching a ticket to the Super Bowl. Now we move on to the AFC championship game because I spent a lot of time talking about uh, the NFC championship game. So now we move on uh, to the AFC championship game. Now this is the Bengals at the Chiefs. Uh, the health of quarterback Patrick Mahomes uh, will command the greatest attention. I think that's the concern coming into the game. But I listened to some of the, some of the podcast Three Point Conversion yesterday. My good friend Raphael, he's doing his thing. Uh, great podcast. If you guys haven't heard, I recommend you guys check it out. It's a great podcast. Uh, he has guests on, and he had uh, he had 
Darren Smith on. Darren Smith is um, a radio personality in Kansas City, and Darren and Darren Smith is very close to the Kansas City Chiefs team. Uh, he's been around the team. He saw uh, Patrick Mahomes practicing close and personal. He saw him twice um, this week, and he said Patrick Mahomes looked fine. Uh, he's been at the training facility since last Sunday. Uh, they've been working on him to get him ready for this game. Um, and and Darren said that you know there's a lot of optimism that he that he looks good and he's ready to go uh, for today's game. So um, you know maybe that's not mu as much of a concern. I'm hearing from Darren Smith, um, who reports, who report, who who covers the Chiefs and uh, reports the news stories about um, anything related to the Chiefs. So um, Mahomes is favored by many to win the league MVP for the second time in his young career. Um, he was able to gut his way through a high ankle sprain in Saturday's divisional round. Um, we know he missed a portion of the, of the game, uh, but came back and, and still willed his team to victory. I uh, still delivered uh, passes to his tight end, Travis Kelsey, who is arguably the best tight end in the NFL. He is the best tight end in the NFL. What am I talking about? He clearly is. Um, but they're going to need Mahomes to be 100% against this Bengals team because his his mobility is going to be um, key. You know, and we all know that Patrick Mahomes is a key component to this Chiefs team. Um, so, I mean, his mobility is is a big part of his game. Um, even though he doesn't like to run like a Josh Allen or like a Lamar Jackson, but still... You know, if he's greatly limited, uh, then that can be a problem for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, the Chiefs view this game as a chance for uh, vindication. I talked a little bit about that on my show. Um, flashback to a year ago, and the Chiefs lost 27-24 in overtime to the Bengals in last year's, of course, championship AFC championship game. Uh, they're looking to redeem themselves this year and get back to the Super Bowl. But the Chiefs, the Chiefs, if there's one team that can handle the pressure, it's the Chiefs. The Chiefs are well accustomed to the pressure uh, they'll face this weekend. Uh, but I like the Bengals. I think the Bengals clearly have unfinished business. Uh, they Last year, we all know they shocked the NFL world. Uh, you know, we said it was a a fluke. We talked about how cute, um, it, how cute of a story it was, how bittersweet of a story it was. Um, and, and we thought it was a one-time thing, right? We thought, oh, it was a fluke. They won't be back next year. Uh, this team showed up. This team showed up. They fell short of the Super Bowl against the Rams. Um, uh, this team, this team has peaked at the right time. Joe Burrow has elevated above uh, Josh Allen and the rest of the quarterbacks around this league. I guess it's fair to say um, this team has that winning mindset. And after they took down the Buffalo Bills, uh, they are very convincing. Um, they are one of the more complete teams. Um, I think they're more complete than the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, the Kansas City Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. I get it. They have arguably the best quarterback in the NFL. But when you look at what the Bengals roster has, what the Bengals roster has, um, that's, pretty, that's pretty scary, okay? Because they have... Joe Burrow has weapons at his disposal. He can spread the field. Um, you know, they they can uh, space the field. Um, he has a number of targets and a number of options. You have T. Higgins. You have Jamar Chase. You have one of the best receiving rooms in the NFL, the deepest receiving room in the NFL. Um, and... I just like the Bengals' chances 
But what nobody talks about is the Bengals' defense. The Bengals' defense has come on at the right time. Uh, the Bengals' defense has um, been flawless. Um, they're, they're underrated. They're a very underrated defense. They have a very underrated secondary. Um, and I think the Bengals can duplicate their performance against Mahomes from last year's uh, conference championship. I like the Bengals in this game. I, I really like the Bengals. The Bengals are playing um, playing great football right now. I love the edge and the confidence the Bengals are playing with right now. Um, and they are out to prove that last year um, wasn't a fluke and that everyone was wrong to consider the Chiefs and the Bills like me. I, I, can, I, I thought the Bills was the elite team, um, and I thought they would be the team to come out of the AFC. I, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. The Bengals took them down. So um, I, I look forward to Sunday's game. There's a lot of storylines. You know, um, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a great game. We can't sleep on the Bengals. Bengals running back. Uh, th their running game is strong. You got Joe Mixon, uh, who can run the ball consistently well. Uh, he has dis distinguished himself this season as one of the top backs in the league. I, I, I think that's fair to say. Um, you know, and he offers a great change of pace um, as well. And, I mean, you know, they're, they're really they're really dynamic in the backfield. You know, they, they really are. So I like, I like the Bengals to win. So those are my teams. I got the, I got the 49ers and the Bengals in the Super Bowl. Those are my Super Bowl picks. That's my prediction. That's how I see it. Um, that's how I see it all. Um, that's how I see it happening. That's how I see it happening. Um, you know, good luck to all four teams today. But the Bengals and the 49ers will be in Arizona two weeks from now to play in the Super Bowl. I'll see you guys later. I thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys like this video and if you want to see more content from me, you guys know what's up. You guys know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it um, with the with with those you know. So I really I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys. None of this is possible without you guys. You guys enjoy the games today. Have a great Sunday, and we'll talk very soon.